re recanalization is a really interesting concept in cerebral venous thrombosis because when you look at ischemic stroke, you know, recanalization is you know, clearly the number one goal as quickly as possible. And so, I mean, you would think that's the same for cerebral venous thrombosis. And certainly we know that a lot of the um, early issues that people face are because of, you know, backlogged increased venous pressure and, uh, uh, you know, the lack of drainage leads to venous edema and venous hemorrhage. And so you would think that um, uh, recanalization as quickly as possible is the goal. Um, but it's not necessarily that simple. Um, to date, there really haven't been any studies that have shown an association between recanalization and better functional outcomes. But I think you really have to read between the lines in those studies. Um, one thing is when you look at recanalization, and I think traditionally we've looked at recanalization like months later. And, uh, you know, as we've shown um, and, and as we found from secret, you know, people tend to improve months later. So it's tough to know what comes first, you know, recanalization or improvement. Um, the second thing is how you achieve recanalization because, you know, going in with something like endovascular therapy and higher risk patients um, may be a way to achieve recanalization very quickly, but it's a procedure that's not without risks. Um, there aren't standardized approaches. There aren't uh, uh, tools that have been designed for the venous sinuses. And because it's a rare disease with, you know, even rarer uh, rates of serious presentations, there's not as much operator experience. So um, there's that heterogeneity associated with that as well. Um, so really, there's only one study that provides convincing evidence that early recanalization may be um, uh, something that relates to prognosis. Um, my colleague in Portugal, uh, Diana uh, Aguirre de Souza, um, conducted a couple of years ago a prospective neuroimaging study called Priority CBT. And what they did was they did follow-up imaging after one week of anticoagulation, and they followed this up again with um, uh, imaging at uh, 90 days. And they had very high quality, you know, standardized MR venography and, and parenchymal imaging. And what they found that was very interesting is that patients on anticoagulation were beginning to recanalize uh, as early as one week uh, after beginning treatment. So about 70% of patients had achieved at least partial recanalization, even early on in that journey. And what they had found was that that early recanalization was associated with less parenchymal damage. So specifically, patients with non-hemorrhagic lesions were less likely to have expansion of existing lesions, and they were also less likely to develop new lesions. So that is really... The one piece of evidence we have that early recanalization is probably associated with less damage. Now, what that means over the longer term is harder to determine. Um, you know, structurally, they found like on 90 day scans, even people that had had, you know, fairly major parenchymal lesions, in many cases, those lesions were much smaller at 90 days, or in some cases, they disappeared entirely. And um, with respect to functional outcomes, you know, with, with MRS, they didn't really see any association between recanalization and prognosis, but the study was empowered to, to examine that association. And um, they also, interesting, didn't, uh, interestingly, didn't find an association with headache and recanalization. Um, but that being said, you know, it may not have been the right scale, and it was a, a small um, group of patients overall. When we look at meta-analysis data, um, it seems that recanalization on the whole is associated with a better prognosis, um, less recurrence of cerebral venous thrombosis, and that um, full recanalization is associated with less headache than partial recanalization. Um, but again, it's just, you know, it's an aggregate of very many studies that have different timing, different ways of measuring outcomes, and very few of them are prospective. Um, so I think there's a lot of promise in terms of looking at recanalization as an outcome in the future, but what those implications are, shorter term, longer term, and in terms of these more granular patient-centered outcomes um, accompanied, by, uh, accompanied by the radiological implications, I think is something that needs further study, but it, it could be a promising outcome for future trials.